Hello everyone, my name's Cliff and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. And today we're going to continue with my passion project where I'm counting down my top 100 books of all time and we've reached the halfway point and this is 50 to 41. Stay tuned. Okay everyone, so although this has been a bit of a challenge, putting this list together, I've had a lot of fun and I hope you have as well. Um, and as I say, we've reached the halfway point and as we get closer to number one, things become a little bit more challenging. Um, yeah, just putting the choices together and putting them in order, but as I said, it's all about fun and it's about my personal opinion. Just note, these are not the greatest novels, this is not the greatest literature of all time. It's the books that I've read in my life that have impacted on me. Um, and for the purpose of this list, the rules were uh, only two books per author. And if I'm going to talk about an entire series, like a fantasy series, I might just talk about the series as a whole or choose one book from that series. So let's get going. Okay, we're going to start at number 50. Now, I used to think that The Shining by Stephen King was the most terrifying book. I've ever read. Until I read Off Season by Jack Ketchum. And I did this last year. And it really scared the crap out of me. It is truly terrifying. And very simply, uh, it's quite a simple story. And you've got six out of towners who end up in a cabin, a lonely cabin, uh, next to the small town in Maine. And basically, very close to them, close by, is a family of vicious inbred cannibals who are waiting for nightfall because they are very very hungry now this book has a slow build up uh, at first you get to know the characters um, basically they're eating drinking fornicating carrying on in their cabin uh, unaware of what's about to hit them and it's only later on in the story where the ship really hits a fan and when it does all hell breaks loose and as I said, this book is terrifying. What sets it apart from other, I suppose you would call splatterpunk books, because it's very violent, it's very graphic, it's very grotesque. But what sets it apart is the writing, in my opinion. Um, it really keeps you on a knife edge. And when the action starts, every single page is just loaded with tension and dread. Uh, and I couldn't stop. Uh, this was one of those books that I finished at 3, 4 in the morning. I read it in one sitting. It was just so good. And so absolutely bloody terrifying. So that is Off Season by Jack Ketchum. In 49th position, we have a South African novel. The Leopard Hunts in Darkness by Wilbur Smith. Uh, now this is a thrilling adventure story. And it's about a best-selling author who returns to his homeland in Zimbabwe to investigate a poaching ring, an ivory poaching ring, and also a possible plot by the Russians to overthrow the government. And while he's there, as beautiful women, as they, as they are in all Wilbur Smith stories, there's a nail-biting adventure and thrills and spills. And there's also some very graphic violence. Um, there's warring tribes. And really, yeah, this is just an astounding book. And also the descriptions, the writing, of Zimbabwe. You get a real feel for the place. And it used to be a real beautiful country. Uh, not so much anymore, but we're not going to go there. Uh, I was lucky enough to visit it before it became a bit of a mess. Um, thanks to, and as I say, I'm not going to go there. We're not going to get political in this video. Um, but yeah, anything by Wilbur Smith. If you want some thrilling adventure stories, Wilbur Smith's the way to go. But be warned, it gets graphic. In 48th position, we got uh, another South African novel, Jock of the Bushveld by Percy Fitzgerald. Uh, now, although this is uh, kind of labelled for kids or children, believe me, uh, adults can enjoy it. It can be a book enjoyed by everyone. Although it is number one, it is very vicious at places, so be warned, animal violence. 
and also it is a product of its time. It was written over a hundred years ago and it's a South African book um, set in the kind of South African wilderness, the bushveld. And yeah, I would not get the unedited version uh, if you are very sensitive to racial slurs. Um, it is, yeah, I'd rather get the edited version where all that stuff is kind of done away with. And then what you get is a wonderful adventure. Um, the relationship between an owner and a dog. And the owner chooses this dog from the runt of the litter. Um, and this dog grows into a very loyal, um, a very capable hunter. And yeah, <laughs> they go on adventures together, hunting in the African bush. And they have to survive, they have to hunt for meat. And they, there's a very strong bond that grows between the owner and the dog. Um, and it's basically their life together. And yeah, I really love this. Um, I love the African bush, having been, having spent a lot of my life there. Um, and I love animals, as you noticed from previous videos that I've made. And yeah, it's, it's heartwarming, it's sad, it's tragic. And there is some serious violence. I'll just let you know there was one battle between Jock and his baboon. And if you don't know what a baboon looks like, you can see it's quite a formidable um, creature. And yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that happens in this book. But if you are sensitive to animal violence, don't pick it up. But otherwise, it's a, yeah, just an awesome South African adventure story. In 47th place, we have The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Now, this is the first part of a series called Chaos Walking. And it was made into a movie, which I would avoid at all costs. Read the book rather. Uh, and basically, it's about it's a science fiction dystopian novel. And it's about this world or this town where only men exist. And where the men, at the beginning, just everyone can hear everyone else's thoughts. There's this thing that happened called noise. So there's nothing, nothing uncensored, no matter what these men think, everyone else can think along. Uh, yeah, their thoughts. So you can just imagine, uh, it's pretty much chaos. And even animals can hear, you can hear animal sorts as well. Now this boy in this village, who's not yet a man, that becomes important later on, he encounters this place of silence, which happens to be a girl, no spoilers. And he finds himself on the run from these men, uh, with his dog, Manchi. <laughs> and it's quite amusing because and hear the dog's thoughts and they're on the run uh, and it is thrilling it's violent uh, even though it's classified as a YA novel I found it to be pretty damn violent in places and it's truly exciting um, it keeps you on the edge of your seat while you're reading this book and also just be warned once again there's some animal violence animal harm so if that's a book that you if that's something that upsets you then don't read the book that is the knife of never letting go. Okay, next up we have Intensity by Dean Koontz. Now, this is unlike any other book that he has written, and it is by far my favorite. Uh, it's much more fast-paced. It doesn't have all the kind of Koontz stuff that you find in his other books, like Labrador, this, this, this. You know, kind of rich people, and I don't know, but this is just a very tense, exciting ride. Um, and do yourselves a favor, if you enjoy Dean Koontz, pick this one up. And basically you've got a kick-ass female protagonist uh, <laughs> who's basically comes up against this serial killer. He's so much more than that. He's a terrifying psychopath and it's just a cat and mouse game um, and <laughs> it's brutal in places and I hate to say this, I'm saying it again, there's animal violence. Don't worry, it's not in all of these books um, and it's not what you expect from Koontz. But there's animal violence, and there's also some very dark stuff that happens in this book. But if you're a horror lover like me, you shouldn't have any problem with it. Uh, but in terms of being a serial killer and a true psych psychopath, this book goes to some messed up places. And yeah, it's just a great read. Um, that is Intensity by Dean Koontz. I did talk about it in my top, 100, top 10 books of all time, uh, horror books. Uh, yeah, it's kind of gone a little bit further down since then, but it's still an excellent book, so it's intensity. 
Okay, next up we've got an unusual one and that is The Wasteland and Other Poems by T.S. Eliot. Now this is my favourite long poem of all time. I'm not going to spend forever sitting here and trying to dissect it for you. I'm just going to read a little part of the poem so I can get a feel. Uh, that's just my favourite part. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man, you cannot say or guess, for you know only a heap of broken images, where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock, and I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you, or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Now I just love that. Um, now I love this whole poem. It's kind of, it's a long poem in different kind of sections. I did an analysis of it, um, but for a two minute review I'm just not going to do that here. Uh, but I do encourage you to read that poem, The Wasteland. Okay, we're going to do a few more classics before we get back into the horror. And first of all, the great American novel, uh, The Great Gatsby by Scott Fitzgerald, which celebrates the, the roaring 20s in America, and flappers, and uh, materialism, and wild parties, no consequence. And basically this novel, uh, there's layers to it that I can't talk about here, but it is a critique of the American dream. It's a critique of materialism and the shallow way that people trade themselves in that time. Just wild parties with uh, drinking and smoking and no consequence. It is also a kind of tragic love story, although love is used very loosely there. And just very basically, it's about the man, the great Gatsby, who is super rich and he has a mansion and he throws these wild parties, but he's kind of a mystery. Nobody knows who or what he is. There's lots of rumors flying about. And unfortunately for him, there is someone who's kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it enemy, but it's kind of a tragic book. I'm not going to go into any more spoilers, nothing at all. But if you haven't read it, and even if you have read it, like let's say at school, give it a reread. There are things you discover about this book each time that you read it. Um, and that you might appreciate more, not just about the gorgeous writing and the characters that are very flawed, but just about the story itself and the critique. And yeah, that is a great Gatsby. Another thing about the great Gatsby um, is this cover, this, this this copy that I've got. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, shows him at a party, and I just want to read at the bottom here. Uh, the cover shows a detail from Mon Montpano's Blues by Kies van Dongen in a private collection, uh, Snark International. For copyright reasons, this edition is not for sale, sale in the USA or Canada. And that's also why I've had to put a, a different edition up there, because this cover is kind of unique. Oh, Mikhan, I love it. Okay, for number 43, we got Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now, I have mentioned this on my channel. I love this book. Uh, I love Jane Eyre herself. She's just a kick-ass, awesome character. And the trials and tribulations she has to go through from being an orphan as a young child with this awful aunt. And what she has to go through in school, this boarding school. And eventually she kind of grows strong and independent and uh, can think for herself. And gets, yeah, kind of quite a, just an awesome character and she meets up with this uh, Mr. Rochester, becomes a governess and she starts falling in love with Mr. Rochester. But all I'm going to say is that Mr. Rochester has some dark secrets. Yeah, I highly recommend this gothic classic. It is dark in places, uh, which really I really appreciate it. And there was another book um, <laughs> It's kind of a monster mash that I read last year and I spoke about with Jane Eyre and it's called Jane Slayer which I really enjoyed. But I'm not including that, I'm including the original classic. So that is Jane Eyre. For number 42 we got The Agony and the Ecstasy by Irving Stone. This is a magnificent historical novel. 
It's a biography of the life of Michelangelo, famous painter and sculptor, and you really get immersed in his story. Um, and the writer does such a beautiful job immersing you where he grows up in Italy and his sort of adventures, his loves, the love of his life, the um, friendships and just everything about this man. And even if you're not an artist, I think you'll still love this book. It's just so immersive and so beautifully written. And it kind of helps that I've been to Italy and Rome. I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to go to the Vatican City so I, as a young boy, actually went into the Sistine Chapel and stared up at the roof and looked at the artwork there. So this book, yeah, it's kind of, kind of had a profound impact on me and I absolutely love it. That is the agony and the ecstasy. Okay, and finally, I've done a full review of this particular book, um, which I will link at the end of this video, and that is We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. Now, after being disappointed with The Haunting of Hill House, this book blew me away. Um, and I'm actually kind of surprised it's so low on this list. If I had to look at it again, it might leap quite a bit higher. But still, just a stunning, <laughs> eerie, unsettling, creepy novella. It's not quite a novel, it's quite short. About this very, very creepy family, um, and especially these sisters. And there's one character in particular that I absolutely love and that is Mary Cat. Um, and just from the very beginning, her writing uh, just puts you sort of off balance, and sort of ill at ease, describing his family, and, um, what's remaining of this family, because they've got a dark secret. Um, and just everything about it is so gothic, and where they live, um, the setting, uh, <laughs> this kind of house, this mansion, seems like it's kind of falling apart a bit. And I'm not going to talk about this book at length because I did give a full review and I want to encourage you to watch my review. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to talk about the plot too much. But do yourselves a favour, um, whether you enjoyed The Haunting of Hill House or not, this book is truly classic. A wonderful gothic horror, creepy and eerie and deliciously dark. Okay everyone, so those are my choices for today. Um, and so next week we're moving into the top 40. So every week is going to get a bit tougher to make these decisions. And yeah, I keep changing my mind on Goodreads and kind of changing <laughs> positions of the books. But I'm doing the best I can and I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, so please let me know what you think about down in the dark spaces below. Have you read any of those books? Uh, what are your, some of your favourite books of all time? And I'd love to hear from you no matter what you have to say. Uh, until next time, take care of yourselves, keep those pages turning, and cheers.